So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Go to Antique Obsessions for the hottest in jewelry, antiques, repurposed, solid sterling silver, one-of-a-kind, handmade by Bruce and Jaja. Go to uh, our Facebook, which is Antique Obsessions, or you can go to Etsy.com and go to Antique Obsessions, one word, or type it into your Google and find us there. Thanks. Tribal, Tribal. primitive, Primitive. rustic, Rustic. burning man. Conceptual subculture for the edgiest, most cutting edge designs of jewelry today. Go to Etsy.com slash shop slash conceptual subculture or one word either by going to Google or search Etsy, E-T-S-Y dot com and type in one word conceptual subculture. You will find the hottest designs using natural stones with wire wrap rings rough, raw, genuine, semi-precious gemstone jewelry, solid sterling silver, copper, leather, organite, bracelets, pendants, chokers, men's copper cups with sterling accents, eco-friendly, repurposed, original, one-of-a-kind design earrings. Support MBN by going to Conceptual Subculture on Etsy. Warning, warning, everything I say is fucking crazy and should not be reinterpreted or reenacted because you will be either shot or MDAA'd. Warning. Montalvo Show, season's greetings, hello ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the Bruce Montalvo Show, it is December 8th, 2017, and tonight you might as well call me Santa Claus, because in your stocking stuffer I bring season's greetings, and a Christmas holiday radio special with none other than the legend of esoteric research himself, Jordan Maxwell, that's right, he joins us. He's uh, on the line right now. Let's see if he's uh, ready to join us. Hello, Jordan. You there? No. He's not there yet. Hello. Okay, well... Very busy. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, just lately, you know, I've been, I've been down for so long and not doing very much of anything, and it looks like everything is starting to pick up again, and now I'm starting to get busy again, so... Um, I'm now working with a company that uh, is in Boulder, Colorado. I'm now working with them. It's called Gaia, G-A-I-A, Gaia. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm on staff now. I'm, I'm working with, uh, with the company and producing videos and uh, all kinds of things we're doing. And it's working out really nice. I really like this company. They're very, very good. Is that the holistic it's a, company? It's, it's, a, it's a major company that's uh, actually bringing people in from all over the world who are doing uh, research and writers and, and, and you know scientists and physicists and all kinds of interesting people from around the world. 
and uh, videotaping them uh, on massive, like you know, eight, ten hours or more, uh, videotaping all of these writers and authors and lecturers and teachers right. on all these all these extraordinary subjects, and then putting them out on on the web for people to. Uh, to sit and watch for days and days and hours and hours of, of all kinds of incredibly interesting people that, um, you know, you used to go to uh, conferences to hear, but now you can sit at home in the computer and hear all of the top uh, people in the UFO field and, uh, and the alternative medical field and, and secret societies and government and banking all of those kind of uh, subjects that I deal with uh, are now being uh, put out on the web with, by a company called Gaia. Right. And, uh, and uh, George so I'm, Norrie. George I'm, I'm Norrie now has working a show. with the company. This is, George Norrie has a, a big show with them, right? He has a TV show, an internet show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was just on it. Oh, wow. Uh, All right. Yeah, about a week ago, I was on George Norrie. He, he was in town, so they... They, uh, you know, they came and got me, and so I did an hour with George, and uh, I'm going to be. And then I did an hour a couple of days ago with uh, Sean Stone, and he was here in town. And next week I'm going to be doing a couple of uh, hours with the uh, with uh, the president of Gaia, which is Jay Widener. Do you know about Jay? Do you, have you ever heard of Jay Widener? Yes, I have. Yes. Okay, well, Jay is the president of Gaia now, and so uh, so I'm going to be doing a, a show or two with him probably next week. That's amazing. Incredible, yep. Jordan. You know, I seem to remember uh, this one strange occurrence that you had while you were on Coast to Coast a while back where this uh, sigil showed up on the computer and your computer got disconnected. What oh, happened? yeah, what yeah, happened yeah, that, that was... That was that's still a, a mystery to me. To even to this day, I have no idea what the what what was going on. But I was on uh, I was on coast to coast with uh, George Norrie, and toward the end of the program, I was on I think for two hours. But toward the end of the program, I I, I touched on a subject that I think somebody did not want me talking about. And uh, all of a sudden, the uh, uh, my phone went dead, and 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 I had no idea what was going on. But the phone went dead, and so of course, uh, uh, you know, the network uh, didn't know what to do either. They didn't know what the problem was, and so I could hear George on the air explaining that for some reason we've just lost Jordan. And then, uh, as I was listening to George telling the audience, um, I also heard my phone came back on, wow. and I heard people walking. I heard um, uh, you know people walking around in a room, and it was obviously a hardwood floor because I could hear it very. I could hear everyone walking and talking, and so it was reverberating, and I could hear it very well. And it was obviously a small office. It wasn't very big. And, uh, and I heard them talking about me. Uh, and, so, and then all of a sudden they went dead again. And so I found out what it was later on. I think I know what it was now because uh, a couple of weeks after that, there was articles coming out on the web and people talking about the fact that the NSA, National Security Administration, uh, the NSA owned and has an office in San Francisco in the telephone building, in the main building, telephone building in San Francisco. There's a office that the NSA uh, has, has had for many years. And, and it is in that office that they can shut down any radio show or any tele, tele, uh, television, or they can actually uh, shut down telephone calls. Wow. And, uh, and so that came out, and there was a lot of people talking about that, uh, about the NSA in San Francisco shutting down phone calls. And uh, so I'm pretty sure that's what it was. They, they shut me down on, on uh, George Norrie's uh, Coast to Coast show. Wow. 
But uh, that and two bucks will get you a cup of coffee, so I just keep working. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. But uh, so far, I'm, I'm all right, and I'm very happy that I'm now working with Gaia because they are really a very nice company. They sure Very nice are. people to work with. Oh, they're doing, they're doing big league things, Jordan, and you, you are uh, doing big league things with them as well. That's, it's great. It's great to hear. Um, anyway, yeah. this, this quantum consciousness tour you did, it, it's, that's big league as well because, I mean, quantum consciousness, I mean, what, what does it refer to, this, uh, this universe, our universe having a consciousness, or how we could all possibly be it, like one consciousness, I mean, the sixth sense that we have, I mean, it's, it goes deeper than that. But tell us, tell us about your tour. Well, it, it, uh, it was a short one, but, uh, but I did meet some really interesting people that I've known in the past, and, uh, and then I happened to, uh, as, as life would have it, I happened to meet them again on the tour, and I don't know that I'll be going on any tours any longer or any, and I still get uh, at least one or two uh, opportunities a week, people emailing, wanting me to speak at some conference or go somewhere to speak at, uh, somewhere. But I don't think I, I'm going. I don't think I'm going to fool with that anymore because I have so many videos I need to do. I've got prepared to do, but I, I haven't had a chance to. And now I do have a chance. Now that I'm working with Gaia. They're offering all of their facilities, computers, and the technicians to help me do what I need to do. So I think I'm going to concentrate just on doing videos for Gaia, and I'm going to be putting out a lot of material. So I'm happy about that, because at least now I can see a, a way to get my videos all done, and done very well, done professionally because they have all the technicians and all the uh, all the computer stuff to do it all right. And so that's what we're doing. They want me to uh, do videos, and they want to produce them for me. So okay. it's going to be a whole different proposition now. I'm going to be able to turn out videos that are top, you know, top of the line and really nice, nicely presented. So that's good. First time in my life I'm able to do something... Uh, like that because I've always done everything on my own by myself and it's very difficult but uh, it's working out nice now so that's where I am that's what I'm doing you deserve it Jordan you totally deserve it now on this tour you discuss topics such as remote viewing and time travel can, can you share with our audience a little bit of what you shared with uh, your uh, your audience on stage <sighs> Well, uh, the one thing that's really important right now, I have got fix, fixated on, on one particular subject because it's so important to the world we're living in right now, and, and it's very difficult for me to uh, explain it because you have to see it. And so, I've, you know, and I've talked with Gaia about this also, and they agree, and so we're going to do a series of, of videos on uh, on a secret society and and how this society has been operating for so long, and the symbols that are used, <clears throat> which are used all over the world, and people do not even know. It's a particular symbol that's used everywhere in the world by all governments, religions. All institutions, military, police, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it all goes back to an ancient secret society many thousands of years ago, which implies that they're still here and they're still working. Uh, and so that's been, you know, the bottom line for me in the past. I don't know, maybe two years now. I've been looking at this and working on it. Uh, it it's an extraordinary story. When you begin to see how the Nazi Party during the Second World War, the uh, the Communist Party with the rise of the Soviet Union, with world fascism uh, now on the rise throughout the world, all of these uh, isms, fascism, communism, Nazism were all actually every one of them were all connected behind the scenes and working with each other. 
And that is, is, that's pretty incredible when you see how much money is being spent by military to supposedly defend uh, 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 the, the governments and the people from these different factions and wars are being formulated based on the Nazis fighting the communists and the communists fighting the fascists and the fascists fighting somebody else. Everybody's fighting somebody and it, and it fuels the whole world uh, military industrial complex. Until you discover that all of these major, uh, major um, uh, political movements, I suppose, uh, are all connected behind the scenes. And it goes back to one thing. And the one thing has one, one uh, symbol which is, uh, which is being used everywhere. And, and I see it in motion pictures, in television, radio, and you see it in advertisements and on products. But, you, the, but the one place where that symbol really showed itself big time in your face was under Obama. Obama used one of the most powerful secret society symbols ever developed by one of the most ancient and most powerful demonic depravity uh, secret society that's ever existed on the earth. It's in a hell of a story. And when you see Obama using the same terms, words, symbols, emblems of this secret society, then it becomes very obvious what's really going on in America, what's really happening right now in America. And, and see the symbol that is a, the same symbol that's used by the Democratic Party, the, the Republican Party, the Nazi Party, the Communist Party, all of these uh, organizations are operating behind the scenes together. And that's that's been basically the subject that I've been looking at now for about two years in particular. I knew about some of these connections for a long time ago, but it just didn't really occur to me until I really started getting into the religious political connections with symbols and societies. Right. Uh, it's a hell of a story. One well, hell of a story, I'll well, tell you. Jordan, they're using Saturnian uh, cult symbols, are they not? Say it again? They're using Saturnian, uh, the Saturnian cult symbols. Oh, yeah, you're talking about Saturn. Yes. I mean, that's oh, what the heavens, eye, yes. that's, that's oh, heavens, what the yes. eye, the eye is, is Saturn. The, the eye of Horus is actually Saturn, and and it's, um, you know, I, I also see the, the secret society's infiltration all, all around the world. I mean, I traveled to uh, Nog Nogales, Mexico, and right across the border, there's this, this little lodge there. I mean, I mean, the Hungarians, the Austrians, they, they went in and they, they established secret societies in places like Mexico. I mean, all around the world. Yeah, you're right. And the symbol I'm talking about, I'm doing a whole series of, of videos on it. I'm going to trace it all the way back to day one. Yes. <clears throat> and it's going to go back to, uh, from what I can tell right now, it goes back to uh, way before the founding of Egypt. But especially in wow. the founding of Egypt uh, and, uh, and the Egyptian, the, the true Egyptian, I'm not talking about the Arabic world today, I'm talking about the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian world. Yes. The ancient Egyptians were nothing at all connected to the Egyptians of today. The Egyptians of today are not Egyptians. They are Arabic. And so there's a world of difference between the sun and the moon. Well, there's a world of difference between being Arabic and being Egyptian. Yes. And, so, and so when I was in Egypt, I've been there three times. I've been in the pyramids, and, and everywhere I go, there are so many people that will tell you in Egypt today that they that their family is from a pharaonic line, meaning that their, their family <clears throat> can be traced back to the pharaohs. Wow. And, and, and I'm saying, I don't think so. You better go back and do your homework, <laughs> because uh, you're Arabic, not Egyptian. The Egyptians were long gone before the Arabic peoples even... Uh, knew anything about that country. Oh, that's, that's funny, Jordan, because the, the so-called Palestinians today, I mean, they say that they're Arabs, 
but Palestine is a Roman term. I mean, it's Roman, yeah. it's Roman for Hebrew, and I get so much slack for that, but it's, <laughs> it's the truth, whether they well, like it or not. And also, when you see the Jews uh, in Jerusalem at the Wailing Wall, yes. and they're all the Jews go there every day at the Wailing Wall for prayers, and they're praying every day at the Wailing Wall, uh, they, and, and, and they believe, as the Christians do, that that is a wall connected to Solomon's temple. Oh, no. no. Yeah, <laughs> and then you find out there was no King Solomon. King Solomon never existed. There was no such a king as King Solomon. And then you find out that the Romans, during the uh, during the Crusades, built a fort in Jerusalem, and they called it Fort Antonia. Yes. Anthony. It's Fort Antonia was a Roman fort. And, uh, and the wall of that Roman fort is today, today we call it the Wailing Wall. So that, in fact, the Jews today are all at the Wailing Wall, putting their prayers into the wall and, and bobbing back and forth in their prayers at the Wailing Wall. Uh, but it's a Roman fort. It has got nothing to do with the Jewish history or the Jews, uh, Jewish religion. It's a Roman fort, and it's called Fort Antonia, like they're, Anthony. They're dumber, dumber than a box of rocks. Yeah, and just <laughs> yeah, and I and I, and I, I one, one Jewish guy was standing at the wall praying, and he was interviewed on television. And they said, "What, what, what do you feel that you're doing here at the wall praying?" And he said, "I know what I'm doing. I'm just talking to the wall." That's all. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, so, that's what Trump's going to be doing. He's going to be hopefully he's talking to his wall. You know, yep, you, yep. you mentioned Egypt and your travels to Egypt. Uh, I was noticing that at the Temple of Isis in Egypt, there's these uh, big pterodactyls, these like interdimensional like uh, yeah. demons. Yeah. These, uh, I want to get into the reptilian mythology with you because uh, aside from seeing that at the Temple of Isis, I've also do, been doing my homework, like you say, and... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I noticed that in ancient Japan, the samurai there, they had these temples devoted to Japanese water demons or water reptilians. Yeah. I mean, t tell us a, a little bit about the, from Egypt to uh, Japan, I mean, this reptilian mythology that seems to be all around the world. Oh, of course it is. It's all over the world. Yes. And, uh, you know, the, the Vatican today, Catholics all over the world today, any, you know, anybody who thinks, uh, calls themselves a Catholic are actually worshiping a God which they don't know anything about, which they've never heard about because the church has necessarily not told them. But if you, if you just do a, a little bit of research, you'll find out that the God that the Vatican is venerating and, and promoting the worship of is not Jesus. It's not Jesus at all. No. The Vatican God is, is, is an ancient uh, Philistine God named Dagon. So write it down and do some research on this God called Dagon, spelled D A. G-O-N, real simple, D-A-G-O-N, Dagon. Dagon was an ancient Philistine god. Uh, he was referred to as a fish god. He came out of the sea. He was, he was, he was dressed in his official robe, was in a suit uh, like, a, like a, uh, a fish, and he wore a fish head. And the fish head today we call the Pope's mitre. And so when you do research on Dagon, D-A-G-O-N, you will find that is the God that the, that the Vatican today is, is emulating and, and, and uh, promoting the worship of. And the Pope wears that papal mitre, the big hat that he wears, yes. that's a fish head. And this is why Christians all around the world on their cars always have a symbol of a fish on the car. They think it has something to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It has to do with a fish god named Dagon. It's All also, you got to do yeah. is take a few minutes and open up an encyclopedia and look up Dagon, and you will begin to see that the fish symbol has nothing to do with Jesus. 
and has to do with the fish god from the Philistines called Dagon, D-A-G-O-N. Go do some research on it. You'll see what I mean. Absolutely. But it's also a sexual symbol. I mean, it's also like the womb. Uh, the oh, it is. It, it, it has been that if you turn it a certain way, if you yeah. turn it upright, then it becomes a, a sexual symbol too. And that's been known for a long time. Wow. And the Vatican, the time. Vatican is just riddled with like snakes and uh, snake symbolism all over the place. I mean, it's insane. And Jordan, they, they, they give us, they spoon feed us these stories. You know, for, oh, I'm telling you, you have no, I don't think you have any idea as to how much uh, religion, both both Catholicism and uh, and the Protestant world movement, the Protestant world religions, the Protestant Christianity, and Judaism, uh, and we know with uh, Islam too, but especially Judaism and Christianity are completely uh, covered with the pagan uh, uh, worship of sex, uh, penis worship, sex worship, uh, and astrology, and all kinds of interesting and dark uh, belief systems, and connecting uh, uh, you know the people today with the ancient gods that uh, that were worshipped thousands of years ago. They right. still are in both Judaism and Christianity. Judaism today is finally pretty much taken over by the planet Saturn. At one time, Judaism was a, 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 lunar, a lunar religion, the worshippers of the moon. Yes. And, uh, and Yahweh was a moon god. But they changed Yahweh into, uh, into a sun god. And this is why today, uh, you know, the, Jew, the Jews will tell you that the most holy name for God uh, cannot be pronounced. It, it's only, it has four letters. And the Jews will tell you that there are four letters that represent the name of God, but you should not use that name. You should not take, you know, what's the scripture say? Don't misuse the name of God in vain. Uh, yes, that's right. Well, yeah, well, that means it's in the Ten Commandments. You should not take uh, the name of God in vain. Well, that means not G-O-D in vain. No, it means Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, -H, Yahweh, which is Yahweh. And Yahweh is a, is a name for God. And so well, the way you know, they... Jordan, I, I hate to cut you off, but you know, I've, I do a lot of homework myself. That's why I love to bring you on. Uh, fantastic conversations. Jehovah. I realize that Jehovah is actually uh, a hermaphrodite. Is, uh, yeah, well, I know. That's why they <laughs> even pre presented uh, Jehovah as a hermaphrodite. And uh, male and female. Yes. Because why? Well, because in Genesis it said that God created man and woman in his image. And then, and then man and woman, male and female, he created them in his own image. Yes. Well, how is he going to create male and female in his own image if he's not male and female himself? Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, and, <laughs> and that brings into play this, uh, uh, I'm going to go back on that name of Yahweh. Yahweh is Yahweh. The, I think the, the better pronunciation is Yahweh. And Yahweh is actually Allah. Allah in, in, the, in the Arabic world is the moon god. So when you hear, you know, that Islam worships Allah, Allah is a moon god, a lunar deity from thousands of years ago. And so the name Yahweh is also a lunar deity. And Moses was the leader of a lunar cult. They were moon worshippers. And not God's chosen people, no moon worshippers. And so Yahweh is actually uh, Allah. Allah is Arabic, Yahweh is Hebrew. But it's the same God, it's a moon God. Wow. And so this is why the Jews do not, uh, the Jews, Jewish people have their holidays and holy days and their very days uh, are go from sundown to sundown, not from sun up to sundown, but their day starts from sundown to the next day at sundown. That's their 
uh, that's the Jewish day. Why does the holy day start at sundown for Jews? Because that's when the moon comes out. Right. As when the sun goes down, the moon comes out. And you know, and George, so, there's an interesting uh, thing with the shapeshifters, because we were talking about the mythology and the moon. I mean, historically, going back to ancient Egypt, you had the lichens or the werewolf story. I mean, those, were the, those were the original reptilian or shapeshifter stories. Yep, a lot of that stuff goes back to pre, uh, you know, here's the, one, here's the one thing you have to know to start with before you enter into any of these subjects, is that the earth itself uh, has been the home to many, many different races and peoples uh, uh, on, on, you know, in, in history. We don't go back thousands of years, actually, in fact, Archaeologically and paleontology, we go back billions of years with a B because we are finding artifacts in the earth which we, which are being found in strata, which is four billion years old, three and a half to four billion years old. You know, if you dig down into the earth as these mining companies do and they go down so many miles into the earth, and that strata at that depth down there, many miles down, uh, we know that that strata is uh, three and a half to four billion years old. And yet when we go down there, as they did in South Africa, in Central Africa, they went down uh, into strata so far down into the earth that they know that it was at least three and a half billion years old. And they were finding down there handmade artifacts. Somebody was melting metals and melting gold and creating chains and, and rings and wow. artifacts in strata, which is down so many miles down as in strata, which is three and a half billion years old. Wow. And, you and have, yet we're yeah. finding handmade artifacts. You have an interesting story, Jordan. I've heard you tell it. Um, why don't you tell our audience about this story where you were uh, in Palmdale and you were uh, given uh, access to, uh, like, an underground, basically, reptilian lair. Well, yeah, that, but it was up in Area 51. Yes. Tell us about Area 51. Is it just oh, a, yeah, well, is it just a Area 51, as far as I'm concerned, because I was there and I saw it with my own eyes. Uh, I've heard all the stories about Area 51. Uh, and some people say there are aliens there, and some people say there are extraterrestrial craft there. But I was there. <clears throat> I wasn't in Area 51. Nobody can go in there as military, but I was right outside, and I stayed. I've been there at least a dozen times and spent many days there at each time uh, in, in a little town called Rachel. And... Uh, I have seen things with my own eyes while I was there in Rachel that I shall never forget that were the most extraordinary things that I was an eyewitness to. I saw seven UFOs, each one the size of a full moon in the sky, seven of them. And it was on a, on a totally dark night when it was heavily overcast on the desert and there were two other people with me, and we all three uh, saw these seven UFOs, whatever they were. They were round, circular, disc-shaped things. They were absolutely frightening to me. I was absolutely, fr I, I was scared to death because I know that this was not of this world. I knew that. I, I, my gut told me. You were not seeing, uh, you know, man-made craft. What they were doing, what they were capable of doing, all seven of these uh, these disc-shaped things were doing extraordinary things. And so they came down closer to us. They, when we first saw them, they were full moon size. Then they came down closer, and we're out on the we were out on the desert. I mean, it's a big story, but I'm just giving you the quick. Uh, the, the Reader's Digest version. And <laughs> then when we got back to, we, we, we got out of there quickly. We, we quickly got in the car and sped back to the highway and, uh, and 
you know, we weren't going back out there ever again. And uh, so when we went back to Area 51, we went back to Rachel. We had rented a room for the, for the night. And so we stayed overnight in, uh, in the rooms. And, and uh, the next morning, uh, I, I got up late and my two friends that were with me were already in the restaurant having breakfast. And I went over and saw them, and they're sitting there at the table. And it was two of two of my friends, a lady and a man, and uh, and uh, they were talking to a bunch of people sitting at the table. T- and I thought they were telling everybody about the UFOs we saw last night, the seven big, you know, the big crap we saw. Yeah. And they weren't. They were telling uh, everybody about the alien that came in our room last night. And uh, and that's an extraordinary story, that uh, this alien came in our room uh, in the motel. So they knew who we were out there in the desert, and they followed us back and even came in our room. Dear God. And so, uh, and so when I hear people talk about aliens in Area 51, I will guarantee you, you can bet on it, there are aliens out there, and there is there are uh, extraterrestrial craft out there because I know I've seen it. And you you don't need to believe me. All you need to do is have the experience yourself to wake up and have an alien in your room. And then you will never have to worry about believing anybody talking about aliens. You will damn well know they exist. Jordan, I, I, I believe you. But there's so many ways to, to categorize uh, what, what he is. Is he an alien? Is he a interdimensional deity? Is, a, is he an extra-dimensional life form? Right? I mean, there's so many ways to categorize Of course there is. Phenomena. Of course there is. And I don't know. All I know is what my eyes saw. And, and I didn't see the alien. I, I, my, my, he, the alien came in my friend's bedroom. He was next to us. Wow. He was next to me. One of my friends was in the room I was in, in the bedroom I was in, and then then there was a, a next bedroom right next to us, and the the alien came in the other room, and uh, what what kind? I mean, is it because there's so many? Like I I mean, the, you have the Pleiadians from the Pleiades, you have uh, the Greys, uh, who are the subservient to the reptilians in the folklore. I mean, what, what kind of of uh, deity was this? Well, what uh, there is a video out there that Anthony Helder put a video out, and it's still it's on the web. You can just go out. It's on uh, YouTube, and you can just go and watch it it's for free. It's on the YouTube, and it's called Alien, not Area Area Fifty One. It's called Alien Fifty One. And if you go on the U- YouTube and find Alien Fifty One, uh, it's a it's about an hour and a half video on the UFO and alien stuff going on in area at area 51 but toward the I'd say about two-thirds into uh, you know, into the video there's about a seven minute part seven a seven or eight minute uh, a piece of the film where Anthony Helder and and I was out on uh, out there at Rachel one night with the friend who saw the alien in his bedroom. Well, he and I were back out there at at Area 51. And there was a lot of people in the restaurant, uh, and we were talking about, you know, he was was telling everybody about what he had seen in the bedroom, and I was telling him what we had seen out there in the desert, uh, the seven craft. And so while we were talking, uh, the the lady who owns the place, Pat, uh, Pat Travis, she is the owner of the of the restaurant in the little alien. She suggested that we go outside because it's about five thirty or six o'clock in the evening, and it was a summer night and it was beautiful out. And she suggested that we go all everybody in the restaurant go out and sit outside and uh, and film this interview that that Anthony was doing with me and my friend. And so we all went outside, and they set up the lights and the cameras. And so for about eight minutes or so in, in that video called Alien 51, uh, it's about three, 
three quarters of the way through the film, you will see myself and, and my friend Paul Tice, who saw the alien, and listen to the interview. He interviews Paul and myself both. And I'm just telling him what I saw and, and the, the you know and the craft, etc. And then he turns to Paul and Paul uh, begins to explain what he saw in his bedroom when this alien came in. And then we and then uh, Anthony and the camera guy and myself and Paul, we all got up and we went over to that room. And we went into the room, and they show you know you can see us as we're going into the room, and then we're in the room, and Paul's standing there explaining what he saw, and what they look like, and uh, and so it's all in that video. So excellent, yeah. Be sure to check it out. Now, Paul Tice, he helped uh, co-author a book with you called The Old Time Religion, right? That's right. That's right. But Paul has a bookstore that is absolutely sensational. He's a book publisher. But he has a bookstore in San Diego, and it's called the T H E, the Book Tree, Book Tree. And if you go on the web to the Book Tree bookstore, it's a massive, massive uh, uh, store of just hundreds and hundreds of titles of out of print books that nobody knows anything about on on UFOs, religion, occultism. All kinds of strange stuff in the world that you know that was a very important books written back in the 18th and 19th century and the 20th century. Oh, I've seen I've seen the collection he has. It's quite extensive. Yeah, it's magnificent. Oh. And so, if you're really interested in these kind of subjects, boy, you need to know about the book tree. Definitely. In San Diego, you can he's, order you know, anything he's got. You hear him, ladies and gentlemen. He's telling you where to go to know yep. the the nitty gritty. Anyway, Jordan, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, we we uh, we talk about uh, astro theology. You're one of the, the the best in explaining it. Now, uh, it's all stories. It's all the greatest story ever told. The Virgin Mary is just the the Stella Maris, the North Pole, Polaris, right? I mean, it's all just uh, star worship. Yeah, well, it's a very, very ancient and a very big story. And the story is, uh, uh, which is based on what we call today the Bible, both Old and New Testament. And uh, the both Old and New Testament is astrotheology. Yeah. And if you don't understand what astrotheology is, you'll never see it, because the church has covered it up so well and the and the and the synagogues have covered it up so well that nobody will see it. But if you ever have someone sit you down and begin to un unravel the story of the Bible, you begin to see for the first time there's an enormous uh, story there that's never been told to the people. Right. And now it all begins to make sense. Then for the first time. All the things you've ever heard about Jesus makes sense. Oh, Jordan, it makes so much sense because, I mean, the Stella Maris, the Ursa, Ursa Minor, okay, is basically, she's referred to as Our Lady of the Sea. And who do they worship? They worship Zeus, who is the, the king of the sea. And, yeah. and, and they also worship Zeus's father, uh, Cronus, <clears throat> who, who Zeus turned against. I mean, it's all, it's all just uh, mythology. It's, the, it's yeah. everything. And, and there's another thing, too. That's a whole subject. I mean, I get into, <clears throat> we could do another time. It's a big subject. But what we call today God, when you see Christians in church all over the world and, and Jews in synagogues worshiping God, yes. that God is Zeus, Z-E-U-S. Zeus is God. And no, nobody's going to understand that unless you do the research and you find out that the very word Zeus was the word for God in the ancient Greek world. And then they, uh, the Romans picked it up in the Roman Empire and worshipped the god Zeus. And it became known as Dios. And then becomes, you know, then from Dios, which comes from Zeus, we now have the word God. Yeah. in our language, in English. And so you can trace back through etymology, through the, uh, through the use of uh, etymo etymological dictionaries, 
the word Zeus goes back to the ancient word for God. And right. so uh, there's a whole thing you have to see and listen to and hear uh, that I do where I'm explaining all the words, where they came from, and how they changed the names with each empire that came along so that today Christians are actually worshiping Zeus. Yes. And, and they don't know it. And so Zeus was very important God and may be very, uh, very interesting, might in fact actually be a god. And, and even though the pagans or the ancient peoples worship Zeus, there very well in my mind could be the possibility that there is such a god named Zeus. And I have a reason for saying that, because I've been looking at this subject for 58 years, and I can tell you, there is some legitimate science and some legitimate research being done on the on what we call Zeus, and there very well might be something to that stuff uh, that story. Oh yeah, the, he's po Poseidon. Know. I mean, he's uh, you know uh, from the Cthulhu. Uh, the, what is it? The the Lovecraft mythos. I mean, you have the the octopus uh, monster of the sea. I mean, that's that's who Zeus is based off of. I mean, Poseidon. That's exactly right. All of that can be traced back in history. All you have to do yes. is devote a little time to uh, realize what has been going on on the earth for thousands of years that they never told you. Absolutely. And like, and like, like George yes. Carlin says, it's a big club and you ain't in it. I've devoted, as you can see, I've devoted my life to to studying it as well, Jordan. But, uh, tell us, you, you talk about etymology and words. I I love when you break down the true meaning of the word British. Tell, uh, tell British? Us. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, British comes from two words. In Hebrew, Brit, B-R-E-T-H, Brit. Brit is a contract. And the word ish, all Jews know ish, I-S-H, is a man or men. It can be one, it can be singular or plural. But man in Hebrew is ish, I-S-H. Yeah. And bereth, B-R-E-T-H, bereth is a contract. And so uh, if you're going to buy a new home or a car or something in Israel, you're going to sign a bereth. A bereth is a contract. And so you take bereth and ish and put them together, it becomes bereth ish, or in English, Brit ish. Or like a contract to become a man, like the, you know, the. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's Brit ish smaller, means but... contract man. Yeah. It means the man of the contract. Wow. Well, what contract? Well, you're talking about the, uh, the um, Ark of the Covenant. The covenant is a as a uh, as a as a contract between man and God, and so the man who is referred to as the man of the contract was the Brit ish or Brit ish, and that's totally different than English. English has nothing to do with Brit ish, and Brit ish is a contract man. English is a bloodline. Wow. And so when you start breaking down these words and terms and where they come from, you begin to see that there's a whole world of knowledge you've never been told, you've never been introduced to, and uh, it's going to be very difficult when you finally wake up and start doing the research on your own. And today it's amazing to me that today with the, uh, with the advent of uh, computers, and the web and the, and the hundreds of thousands of sites with all kinds of information and research material there. And we have libraries all over the world and every town has libraries. And yet today with libraries and computers and all kinds of speakers and teachers talking publicly and you can sit and watch for hours on end and days on end watching on YouTube uh, lectures by great minds and brilliant people and scientists and astronomers, etc. With all of this uh, opportunity to learn and stretch your mind, uh, people are today more ignorant than they've ever been. Wow. 
and they don't realize your mind is like a parachute. It don't work if it's not open. And so, so many people are frightened to death to look at anything that might smell like it's uh, scientific or it might be of uh, this world, because you know Christians are told not to have anything to do with this world. It doesn't mean you can't read and educate your mind. Yeah. And so. Um, it's an extraordinary story, like I said, of betrayal of the human family. How much knowledge we've never been told. Well, I've heard you. I've heard you state it's this also this mass proliferation of entertainment that's just uh, contributing to the deliberate dumbing down of, of America and the, the whole world. Well, I think that's overwhelmingly obvious. Yeah. Look at the mentality of the general public. Uh, throughout the world, both in the East and the West, the general intellectual mentality of the human being all over the earth, and I've been all over the earth, and I can tell you, people are people the same all over the world. You can talk about uh, any, uh, any of these subjects that I talk about, people will look at you like you're crazy, I, and, and, and uh, I'm just amazed, and here's why. Here's why it's difficult for people like you and me and others like us who are interested in these arcane subjects, why we get so much flack from people. It's because if you were, uh, as an example, if you were a normal, everyday, average, uh, educated person, uh, a professional person, and you take a vacation, and you go to another city, and in that city is a large, very famous mental hospital, uh, mental asylum, so to speak. Uh, and you go there to visit. Since it's a, such a large institution in that city, you go to the mental institution to visit. Well, the first thing you're going to in, encounter is that uh, the people in there, all the mental cases that are in there, they're ranting and raving and yelling at each other, and there's all kinds of arguments 24 hours a day because the people are mentally incompetent. They're mentally, uh, you know, challenged, I guess is the polite word, but they're mental cases, and so they're arguing with each other. But they know each other. They live with each other day in and day out. So it's all right for them because they are just arguing just for the sake of arguing. But they know each other. They live with each other. But when you come in, nobody knows you. Nobody's ever seen you. You don't dress like them. You don't act like them. You don't talk like them. So everybody in the whole mental institute does not like you, period. They don't like you. You are a foreigner. You don't belong there. And so therefore, why? Because you're crazy? No, they're crazy. And you are normal. And they don't like you because they don't understand you. They, don't, they can't relate to you. So nobody there likes you. And everybody's suspicious oh, of you. It's starting to make so much sense now. With seeing yep. that. No, Jordan, it's great to have you on. You know, we, we were going to have you on for the uh, Halloween specials, but it's great to have you on for, for Christmas during this. It makes sense. I mean, this uh, Saturnalian traditions, I mean, they begin in Halloween, they go on through Christmas, and I noticed something. I mean, America is so German, right? I mean, they embrace Christmas, Krampus, right? Christmas. I mean, everything about America is German. You got the, the hamburgers. Where were they from? Hamburg, right? I mean, the. It, it, well, even, do you know? Did you are you aware of the fact that uh, Christmas is a very big now in the Western civilization in England and Europe, and in America and Canada and yeah. Australia and New Zealand and you know, all the Western world uh, is very very much into Christmas. Now, I particularly like like Christmas time. Oh, me too. I understand. I understand what it means and where it comes from, and there's nothing wrong with it at all no, if no. you understand it. It's a pagan, but, druid religion, but what, I'm, what I was trying to say is that even, even Rin Tin Tin seems to be German. I mean, have, have I know. <laughs> yeah, I know, but what I was going to say is that, uh, uh, you know, that, um, oh, the reason why Christmas is so uh, popular today in Western civilization, all over the world people celebrate Christmas, 
Do you know what made Christmas popular and why it became so popular? Tell us. Do you know how it, how it became popular? I have an idea, but you know. Tell us. Coca-Cola Company. Ah. Coca-Cola Company decided many, many years ago that they, they wanted to sell their, co their Coca-Colas with cocaine in it. That's why they call it Coke. Coca-Cola. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's they had cocaine in the Coke, and that's why it was you know everybody loved the Coke, not realizing why, because you're getting buzzed off of cocaine. And they're a German company, Coca-Cola. They came up with that's right. Fanta. That's right, Fanta, and the Nazis were involved with it. But the pop, but the point I'm making is that uh, Coca-Cola decided to do a campaign and create a holiday. Uh, so that their, you know, that their Coca Colas would would go in good with the holiday, and so they started a whole uh, a whole uh, advertising campaign oh, many I, many years ago. I remember with the polar bears drinking the Coca Colas. That, exactly. Yeah. And and they kept promoting uh, a, a holiday called Christmas, and they had Santa Claus, they had reindeer, and all this kind of thing. And uh, and before you know it, it kind of caught on, and so now today, it's uh, everybody recognizes the symbols of Santa Claus and reindeer and presents and the Christmas trees, and all of that because of the Coca-Cola company. They're the ones that made it famous. They put a lot of they put many many millions of dollars into advertising uh, a, a, a celebration. At the end of the year, and they called it Christmas, and uh, so that's why Christmas is so important today because Coca-Cola made it important. So a lot of people don't know that. Unbelievable! No, Coca-Cola, and that logo is plastered all over the Third World, where the Nazis ran to after World War Two. Yeah, <laughs> the the whole world we live in is just extraordinary. So much of what's really actually going on. And what has happened in the past, we have no idea in the world. Nobody ever tells the humans anything. Yeah. Nobody tells us anything. You know, and again, John, uh, yes, and again, it's because, like George Carlin says, it's a big club and you ain't in it. So the people who run this planet know all about these dark stories that other people don't know anything about. And they're kept wow. ignorant purposely. And Jordan, I'm sitting here uh, thinking about um, your uh, UFO encounter. And I'm I'm picturing it. I'm almost remote viewing it myself. And um, do do you think it had anything to do with the the secret space program? Uh, it very well could be. But what I take away from that event, what I got from it was that there is, without a doubt, uh, no doubt in my mind, that there is an extraterrestrial presence at Area 51. Yeah. Of that, I am totally and completely satisfied. I know from what I saw with my own eyes, are we're they, not of this world. Are they conducting human experiments there? Oh, I would be a bit surprised what they're doing. The chimeras and all sorts yeah. of godless things. And see, my, that, that particular uh, experience that I had was a very big one. I mean, I would. It took me at least an hour to tell you the whole thing. I could imagine. It started a year and a half before I even saw. Uh, a year and a half before I even went to Area 51, this e event started taking place. I started having people telling me what was going to happen in a year and a half, and where it was going to be, and who, and when the aliens were going to uh, show themselves to me. And I had people explaining it to me. I'm gonna. I was told you're gonna do the driving, and you're gonna be in the, in the out in the desert, and you're gonna be in Nevada, and you're gonna be way out in the desert, and it's gonna be late at night, and this is gonna happen, and that's gonna happen, and then you're gonna see UFOs, and it went on and on and on, telling me all of this stuff a year and a half to two years before it even happened. Wow. Yeah, and so then when it happened. Then I began to have uh, people telling me what it meant and why it happened to me. And it's a big story. I mean, well, you know, it took is... an hour to go through the whole story from, from, from beginning to end, and it's extraordinary. 
Well, you know what, Mr. Maxwell? I mean, I, I could look at the comic book series that your that your life, your real life is based off of the three book uh, comic book series, uh, New World Order. Tell us about that a little bit. I mean, does it? Yeah, deal with that, that's a that comic book. It's a comic book series uh, that was done on me. I think there were five of them in in the series. There were four, and then the fifth one was all the comics in one big big comic. And uh, I think you can still buy them. If yes. I'm not mistaken, you can still buy them on, on, um, on uh, what is it, uh, Amazon? I found one on eBay, actually. I was looking Yeah, at yeah, they're on eBay and Amazon. It was a comic book series done on my life. Now, actually, there's another comic book series done on my life in, in Atlanta, Georgia. And the company sent me all the proofs and all of the basic stuff that was going to be in the, in the comic strip. And uh, it was going to be in a comic book series, and they sent me a lot of the artwork, and I and I, you know, and I've been corresponding with them. So if that happens, and it very well might, and if it happens, that means I have two comic book series out on the market based on my life. Wow! And I've also got uh, television shows that have been done on my life. And, and uh, and documentaries. And, well, you were a CBS reporter at one point. Well, yeah, I I worked with CBS on on three uh, three science shows, but I also uh, have I have served and my work has has served as a basis for uh, you know some major major motion pictures like uh, National Treasure One, National Treasure Two, and they uh, even the 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 motion picture company called me and wanted me to uh, have a part in that show and to do a cameo appearance in the show. Well, as they should. I mean, it's based on your family. Yeah, it's based on my family. It was. It was based on my family, actually, because my family uh, back in 1770s was uh, from the, the, the name of the family was Carol's. C A R R O L L. My mother used to have pictures and tell me all about her family, which was a Carroll family, and she used to tell me the Carroll family were a Catholic Jesuit family wow. in uh, in in uh, Maryland and uh, in Washington D.C. And she would tell me. My mother told me many times. There's a John C. Carroll. And, and he was one of, one of our ancestors. Well, then we find out later, John C. Carroll signed the Declaration of Independence. So one of my one of my ancestors actually signed the Declaration of Independence. Well, John C. Carroll, that, and he was a, the only amazing. Catholic. So, so he probably knew how many uh, kids Ben Franklin had buried under his basement. Yeah, I've I've, <laughs> I've got some real incredible stories. <laughs> I haven't really told people very much, but. I have some ex extraordinary stories you know, I think of, yes. of going back to Washington, D.C. and yeah. where, how it was founded. And my family, uh, there was a, my family had a, uh, or my ancestors, not my family, but my ancestors had a large farm. And it was, uh, and so when the government of the United States of America was being founded, George Washington needed uh, a place for the center for the federal establishment, the federal government. And so from what the history book says, John C. Carroll of the Carroll family uh, donated the 10 miles square uh, of property on his property. He owned a, a, a ranch or a farm or something. And he donated 10 miles square to George Washington for him to build his government, and it became known as Washington, D.C. Wow. So in point of fact, my family, the Carroll family, owned the property which we today call Washington, D.C. Incredible, Jordan. You know what else you have in common with George Washington? You, you both had UFO visions. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you got that right. Yeah, I, I certainly I, I, have. There's a fantastic story of George Washington encountering a, a vision where he sees the United States uh, up to a present day, from his time up to now. It's an incredible story. I, I heard he, he died on his, uh, on his deathbed a Jesuit, so you have to be a Jesuit to, uh, 
be in power in Washington, D.C. That's exactly right. Washington, D.C. is a Catholic Jesuit institution, period. I it's saw a it. Catholic institution. Well, I, I was there, Jordan. I drove through there to uh, move to my, my new yeah. state. I had to pass through D.C., and I saw Jesuit bankers r walking up and down the streets. Yep. Um, you have to know Washington, D.C. is a Catholic Vatican Jesuit establishment. The whole thing. Yeah, I mean, they, Vatican, they, they, period. Say, they say rabbis are, are running running the United States. I didn't see one rabbi walking around in D.C. I saw nothing but Vatican Jesuits. <laughs> That's it. And, and Georgetown University, from yes. where all the presidents of the United States go to Georgetown University, all of them, uh, all these different presidents. And then you find out Georgetown University was founded by the Catholic Jesuits. Right. And the Jesuit, uh, the Jesuit uh, institution in the Catholic Church. Well, Jordan, it's, it's an incredible story. Even the Great Seal was given mysteriously. That's right. All right, of that has Jesuit. to do with Jesuits and secret societies in the Catholic Church. So there's a whole story there. We could talk about that another time. I'm going to have to go pretty quick. You, you got it, but, Jordan. It's, we, we've done the hour. Thank you so much. Now, before we go... I don't know if you know, but there's this show called uh, Stranger Things. You know, Netflix has become like the the new Hollywood. And, and I think they based a lot of, uh, of that show. I mean, it's based off the Montauk Files and, and yeah. Camp mm -hmm. Hero. But I think in a couple of episodes, they may have based some uh, stories off of you. I mean, you, the the story you, you told us about the, the little uh, reptilian that you encountered as a child. I mean, there's a child in this in this series, Stranger Things. And it's almost like word for word what, what your story yeah, is. Yeah, well, I, I, I know because I've had producers and directors and people in Hollywood tell me when I'm talking because I was I lived in Hollywood for 50, you know, yeah. since 1959, which is 58 years ago. I've lived in Hollywood and, and, and done all my work in Hollywood and gave all my lectures in Hollywood over the many, many years. And so I started talking about my, you know, the occult subjects like the UFOs and aliens and occultism in churches and demonism and human sacrifice and all kinds of stories and, and uh, research I was doing back in 1959, some 58 years ago. Incredible. So they know me. My God, Hollywood should know, should know me. They know your life. They, they, they based a lot of their videos and a lot of the stories on my work and what I've, what I've done. So, yeah, but nobody ever sent me a check. They just came to hear me, but nobody ever sent me a check. So. Oh, they're, they're, they're copying your little uh, reptilian story that, that I've heard you tell when you were a child. It's, it's incredible, Jordan. Anyway, Jordan, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Jordan Maxwell. You want to support him, uh, sign up for his uh, Jordan Maxwell Research Society, right? Yep, yep. I have a research uh, website on my website. And that research website is, uh, I'm putting every day, I'm putting a little bit on every day, and my webmaster is putting it up for me, uh, uh, uploading on my, uh, on my research uh, website all kinds of pictures and diagrams and audios and videos and, uh, and places to go, things to see. And then I've got uh, just tons of, of research on <clears throat> words, terms and symbols and, and, and religious uh, concepts, ideas, all kinds of hidden knowledge and hidden stuff. And so if you just go on my website, Jordan Maxwell, and that's J-O-R-D-A-N, like the Jordan River. Yeah. Jordan Maxwell, M-A-X-W-E-L-L. Jordan Maxwell Show, S-H-O-W. And don't forget the show. It's Jordan Maxwell Show dot com. <clears throat> so Jordan Maxwell Show dot com, and then you will see advertise with the banner on my home page to join my research society on my research website. That's where I'm putting all of my materials little by little, and I've got tons and tons of stuff on there, but I got an enormous amount coming. But there's only so much work you can do each day and so much you can do with a webmaster each day. So I'm putting as much as I can every day 
And it's it's already very big. It's going to get a lot bigger. Well, it's a library of knowledge, Jordan. I want to thank you for being on our show. Uh, you know, you're, you're like a grandfather to me, actually. I, I talk to you more than I've ever talked to my grandfather. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I appreciate uh, it. So there. anyway, Jordan Maxwell Show, go on and uh, join my research society, my research website. It, it's all right there. It explains itself. It's all right there on the home page. And uh, maybe we could do another show on Christmas before Christmas. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. But I'm always open to do whatever. So congratulations, Jordan, with uh, your your Gaia, uh, you know, job, your promotion. It's unbelievable. I mean, just the best of luck to you, and and happy New Year. And we're definitely going to do another show since you just said it. We're going to book it for for Christmas. Okay. Excellent. All right. And uh, and I'll be here. I hope I'll be here. I'm 77 years old, but. I feel pretty good right uh, now, so well, no, hopefully no. I'll be here. And I'm, if I am, I'm always ready to do a show with you any time. Thank you, George. You, you have one of the, the strongest batteries uh, we've ever encountered here on this planet. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Sir. We'll Thanks, talk later. Have a, have a good one. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. That was Jordan Maxwell, ladies and gentlemen. What a show. What a show, and I want to thank you for listening. You've been listening to The Bruce Montalvo Show. We're on live Mondays, 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, Friday, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, with the, the change in time where it's uh, it's like 7 Mountain Time. But, but what a show. Uh, stranger things uh, definitely have happened in, in Jordan Maxwell's life. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, you heard it from the I mean, UFO encounters. Uh, I'm going to keep You are listening to MBN, Montana Broadcasting Network.